Welcome to the second season of New Media Lab. I am your host, Robert Southgate, and it is great to be back. Life for me has been a whirlwind since posting the last episode of this podcast. It's hard to believe the last New Media Lab posted two and a half years ago, yet here we are. Right after launching this show, I started an MBA program in marketing at Roosevelt University, which I just completed a couple weeks ago. As part of my MBA, I had the opportunity to do an independent study which involved the business side of podcasting. The thesis I had to prove was this. Podcasts do not need to have a celebrity as a host to attract a large audience. It's a mixture of audience engagement, consistency, and increasing visibility. The analytical process I employed to prove my thesis was I interviewed 16 podcasters with audience sizes from 50 per episode to over 300,000 per episode. I asked everyone the same 10 questions. The answers I got had a lot of similarities, yet were all very different at the same time. The bottom line is, I got a lot of incredible information out of each and every interview. I asked how they engaged with their audience, their social media tactics, timing, and consistency of show posting, how they perceive gaining market share today compared to when they started podcasting, and what the hosts do to achieve high visibility. We discussed best practices and what they perceive as the secret to their success. It was an absolutely fascinating project that provided insights well beyond what my thesis posited. Being a content marketer, I couldn't simply conduct all these interviews, filter them down into a paper and turn it in for a grade and just leave it at that. I recorded these interviews and plan to share them right here on New Media Lab. And don't worry, I was upfront about this with all my guests. In fact, they were all enthusiastic, willing participants, so much so that they agreed to help with another little project, but more on that in a moment. This is a really difficult question. Oh, that's a great question. Oh, that's a good question. That is a great question. That's a really good question. I love this question, and I think this really is going to help me kind of meditate and grow on it. Want to hear the answers? Check out Season 2 of New Media Lab with Robert Southgate. New episodes every Tuesday. Available on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and wherever you subscribe to your favorite podcasts. The second part of this project is I've launched a Patreon page. For those of you who don't know, Patreon is a way for you to support the artists and content creators directly. I've set up the New Media Lab Patreon page to help offset the cost of doing this podcast. I don't see Patreon as a uh, tip jar. It's much more than that. In order to provide value to the New Media Lab patrons, I asked another question of each interviewee that I'm not sharing on the free version of the show. Only supporters will get the answers. The question, how do you monetize? Yeah, I know. The question you get asked all the time if you're a podcaster and that you ask every podcaster you run into. The answers I got back were incredible. You don't want to miss out on these. Each week, I plan to post the answers to this question by the guest featured on the free show exclusively for the supporters on Patreon. I also plan to post unedited versions of some of the interviews occasionally as well. For example, one interview was over two hours long and Chuck full of ideas and information that simply I couldn't fit in the paper I was writing, but that you will definitely want to hear. My suggestion, pause this podcast, go to patreon.com slash new media lab and become a patron. After you've done that, come on back and listen to this episode. Also, if you want to connect with the show, you can email us at southgatesmallbusiness at gmail.com. You can find New Media Lab on Facebook by searching at New Media Lab Show. You can follow me personally on Twitter at rsouthgate or on Instagram at robsouthgate. Our network's website is southgatemediagroup.com, where you can find this as well as over 100 other podcasts, plus blogs, videos, and much more. Finally, Follow our newest endeavor on Twitter, at Indie Podcast Project, and be sure to use the hashtag Support Indie Podcasts when posting your own shows or sharing anything that's podcast-related. Our first guest of Season 2 is Dave Jackson. You may know him from the School of Podcasting. If you don't, pause this and go subscribe to that show right now. You can come back and pick up right where we are. Okay, great. I'm really glad you came back. 
Dave has been podcasting since April of 2005 and has helped hundreds, if not thousands, of podcasters launch and improve their shows. When we started our network, Southgate Media Group, Dave was one of the first people we turned to. He is full of excellent information and shares it freely. There are many reasons Dave Jackson was inducted into the Academy of Podcasters Hall of Fame at the 2018 Podcast Movement. He is simply an icon, and I am thrilled that he joined me for this interview. So, Dave, describe your podcast. Uh, It's called The School of Podcasting. Uh, Hopefully that's obvious enough. And I help people plan, launch, uh, and then grow, and if they want to, monetize their podcast. For this question, I know you do a lot of different podcasts. I'm asking when did you start podcasting? I want to know when you started and when School of Podcasting started. I started in my very first one. Oh, that's a great question. was in April of 2005. I was doing a blog for musicians. So I turned uh, what would eventually become the Marketing Musician Podcast. It's been under like three different names because I could never find the right one. But uh, that was back in April of 2005. And I'm going to say six months after that came the School of Podcasting because I was losing my job. And it's hilarious because the the one thing I tell people to do, do not get into podcasting for fast money. And I needed a job that had flexible hours because I was going to go back to school. And I needed something to keep me in my phone and my car and, and maybe some insurance in there, possibly food. And so I said, well, um, this whole membership thing seems to be the big buzz. And this podcasting thing seems to be the big buzz. I'm going to put the two together and maybe I'll make some money, which is why I was also doing guitar lessons. I was, um, you name it, I was doing it to make money because the first couple of years were painful in the uh, monetization world. Are you a celebrity? Depends on the room I'm walking into. Uh, I would say, no, I'm not a celebrity. Uh, but when I was just in DC this last weekend And I had somebody brought over to me from somebody I already knew that said somebody wanted to meet you, but they were afraid to come over. And I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking I am the most, I I try to be the most approachable person on the planet. And when I was at social media marketing world, I was walking down the hall and I had somebody look up and go, oh, wow. And I turned around and there's nobody else in the hallway. And I go, are you oh wowing me? And she goes, are you Dave Jackson? And I go, Yeah. And like, she's like, oh my gosh. And I I was like, so that is always kind of bizarre. And so based on that, I would say, yes, I'm a celebrity, except if I walk into a room and say podcast movement, I was in there uh, this year and there was a whole bunch of people from radio and whole other areas, not my little bubble. And nobody had a clue who I was. So it kind of depends on the audience, but you know, that's what we have to define. I mean, I'm in the Academy of Podcasters Hall of Fame. That makes it sound like I'm a celebrity. But when I go to the grocery store, I don't get any discounts and I don't have people, you know, I don't have to run from the car to to get the groceries. So, no, I don't think I'm a celebrity. I think it just depends on what audience I'm standing in. Well, and, and you would also then, I assume, say that the celebrity that you do have doesn't really affect downloads. No, not really. I mean, it's what happens is, and this is what I'm always trying to do is plant seeds is when somebody goes, I'm thinking of starting a podcast. Who should I listen to? Hopefully that answer is, is Dave Jackson. Uh, I had a thing, there was a, uh, an event called the new media expo and the former head of the podcast track stepped down and the guy asked, uh, Libsyn, a media hosting company. This is before I worked there. Uh, the guy from blueberry, and the guy from Spreaker, and all three of them said, what do you think about Dave Jackson? And so that is what I'm always looking for. I want somebody to go, you got to go check out this Dave Jackson guy. Do you think gaining audience today is the same as when you started? It's a little harder, but not by much, because it really is the same. You have to know who your audience is. You have to uh, record a podcast that has the information that they want. You then need to go to wherever they are, make friends with them. That's the one everybody skips and then tell them about your podcast. And then hopefully your podcast will inspire them to tell other people. But the thing that's different is back in 2005, you could type in somebody's podcast and you were pretty sure it was going to come up. And I get this more often now is when I type in my podcast, 
it doesn't come up. It's not in Apple iTunes. And then if I type in my name, it does. Why is that? And there are some things in Apple Podcasts that don't make sense. Like if you – like my show is now called School of Podcasting. In the early days, it was called The School of Podcasting because I figured out that if you have the word the in your name, you then rank against everybody else who has the word the in your show. So if you have things that you don't need like the word podcast or something like that, get those out of there because the search results, depending on – what screen you're on typically only show maybe if you do the old show all, which is kind of a misleading button, it should say show the top 300 because that's really what you're getting. And so I've had people, I had one, it was, I think it was called the quick cast and they spelled quick K W I K cast. And if you typed in the quick cast, it did not come up. And I'm like, Oh, come on. That's, you know, that's, they spelled the name weird. That's got to come up. And it's because they had the word the in the name. They took the out. And if you just typed in quick cast, boom, they came right up. So if you're in terms of that growing your audience, that's a little rougher, but I've never relied on Apple podcast to make me famous. I always say Apple podcast is a phone book and it's a, a place for, to be found, assuming their search results leads people to that. But it's really not going to make you famous. I'm actually doing kind of a double secret probation show right now that I haven't told anybody about. But it's in Apple Podcasts, and I'm getting about 10 downloads an episode. So that's really what being an Apple Podcast is going to get you, about 10 downloads. And and people think, unfortunately, that all I have to do is get my podcast in there, and money will fall from heaven, and I'll get 10,000 downloads. So um, that's the part that's that's harder. I think in the past, you it was easier to be found when people searched for you. There wasn't as much competition. Petition. But in the end, when people find you, the part that hasn't changed is you still have to be entertaining. You have to deliver value and you have to inspire people to want to tell their friends about it. And that hasn't changed at all. So what are three key things that you've done to grow your audience? The The big one is I do my best to shut up and listen. So if I go to – I actually host a, a Northeast Ohio podcasters meetup. And the reason I do that, and people are like, well, yeah, but you have all these new people show up, and they're asking all these kind of podcasting 101 questions. And I'm like, exactly. And they're like, what do you mean exactly? And I'm like, it's been a while since I've been in their shoes. So for me, I want to see what they're struggling with. I want to see what they think because, again, my goal is to give my audience what they want and what they need especially. So I do things like that. So I always try to go – where my audience is, the the more times I can tell you the eye color of my audience, that's the best because you're connecting on every level of communication. You've got body language, you've got tone of voice, you've got everything going on. And then from there, you get into things like Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. If they're coming back, I keep hearing, you know, things like that. But it's, it's still kind of networking. Uh, and then just the other thing I've done probably to to grow my audience is I don't turn down podcast interviews. A lot of people are like, well, how many downloads do you have? And I'm like, I could care less. If somebody I, – I, if I have the time and somebody says, will you come talk to me about podcasting, it's – I've never said no because you you never know. I had uh, – if we go back, the, the Northeast Ohio Podcasters Meetup, I had six guys at a uh, at a meeting. And a lot of people are like, well, that's a complete waste of time. Oh, except one of those guys works at the local TV station. And when they needed a podcast guru, he called me and I got to go on a TV show for that. So I never underestimate who's listening. It, it may be, yes, when you have you know hundreds, thousands of people listening, you have a better chance of, quote, someone important or somebody that can help you. But, uh, you know, little little shows grow up to be big shows. And they remember when you came on episode four. Yeah. Yeah, and and if you don't ignore them after, mm-hmm. now you're the big show. And if you don't ignore them, guess what? They become your biggest cheerleader ever. Yeah, so I if, if it was the three things, I uh, to me it's all about content, promotion, so going out, meeting people, letting people know what you do and things like that. And, and uh, what was the third one you just said? Oh, and then going on other shows. What are three key social media practices that you do to build audience? Uh, one, and again, this seems kind of backwards. I always promote if I'm on somebody else's show. So how does that help me? Because it builds a relationship with the person who I was on the show. And that person, when somebody says, Hey, I need to learn how to podcast might say, Hey, what do you think about that Dave Jackson guy? Oh, I like that guy. He actually promoted my show when he came on. So again, just trying to be nice to, to everybody. Um, don't be afraid of Facebook live. 
I did one today and I fired up my phone. I stood by the window cause I needed better lighting and just explained, uh, what was going on in my head and the, the fact that, uh, how goals are important. Cause if you don't have one, I, I felt kind of lost and I get more comments on my Facebook stuff. Like, I love the fact that you just like talk to me on Facebook and there's, it's just you riffing. And I'm like, yeah. So anytime you can connect with the audience, uh, that's, that's something I didn't really expect. And the other thing I'm doing much better that I used to be horrible at is actually checking. Like I, right now I'm not, I, this is like blasphemy. So, you know, hang with me. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm almost not on Instagram. And I realize that I'm so old that I actually say Instagram. Cause I, I do realize now it's the gram, but oh, is I, it? I, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, well, if people that are younger, they're like, Oh man, I'm all over the gram. And I'm like the gram or we're calling it the gram now. Oh man, I'm missing out. So, um, I try to be everywhere, but I wasn't very good at being everywhere. And so like, I'm okay on Twitter and I'm, I spend a lot of time on Facebook, but I'm getting much better at that. I have some tools now to keep me involved on Twitter. Cause a lot of times I was getting lost over there. So I, I think that's the third one. Try to, if, if you're not going to be there, don't set up an account. Cause what's the point? Cause then people go over and they go, Oh, Dave's on Instagram. Oh, he's got four posts. One of them is, you know, his dinner from last night. That's not, again, I, I want to deliver value and until I can figure out what I'm doing. But I, I was getting lessons. I, I went to an event uh, this past weekend and had somebody go, oh, come here, you poor old white man. Let me <laughs> let me show you how to, how to do Instagram. So I'm getting there. Are you on Facebook, Twitter? I mean, what are, what are the social Those media are the platforms two. you use? That's really and it. Then the, and the other one that I'm, I'm ramping up because, hello, uh, it makes sense, is LinkedIn. Yeah. Because there are people, there are businesses now going, we should start a podcast. And so I've uh, and I've met a couple of people at conferences again that have said, why are you not doing things on LinkedIn? And I'm like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. So I've started to play a little more on, on LinkedIn and I've I've got some plans, especially uh, if not in December, definitely in January. I'm going to start doing video over there and a couple other things. And I've applied to be you can actually sell courses on LinkedIn. So I've applied for that. Uh, so that's that's an area I'm going to be looking into because it makes more sense. Uh, I, you know, podcasting often is used as a marketing tool. So why wouldn't I want to go play on the, you know, marketing business uh, platform where I did play for about a month on Twitch, which was great if a bunch of gaming guys wanted to make a podcast. But I went over and went, oh, yeah, this is cool. And I, if I wanted to sit there for 10 years, eventually, you know, if you depending on who you talk to, Twitch is going to be huge. People are going to come over. It's not just going to be about gamers. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. And I realize I could make a huge I could be the one guy that they find. But. I don't know that people are looking for podcasters on Twitch right now. So uh, I just went, hey, let's go spend some more time in LinkedIn. So Dave, what is the secret of your podcast success? From what I understand, because for me, I just, I, I go out, I find something that interests me. I, I kind of feel like I'm my target audience. But I also, again, because I'm always trying to listen to the new people to see what they're getting struggled with or, or if they're having any struggles and things like that. But I have people tell me that without just making it all about me, I always try to weave in a story, either something from my life or something I'm going through or something that affected me, and I try to be entertaining. And this this comes from – I had a, a teacher in college, and I was taking an extremely boring tech report writing class, and he would walk in and blow off – the first 15 minutes of class and just make fun of people. And just, it was just a bunch of fun and cracking jokes. And then about that same time, uh, my niece at the time was, I think all of three and she had some sort of, uh, computer game on a CD. I think it was like Roger rabbit teaches reading or whatever. And I'm over and I just keep hearing these screams and giggles and she's just having a good old time. And I go in there and I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm playing with Roger. And meanwhile, she's getting, she's like spooky smart. To this day, she's still super spooky smart and went, you know, if you can make education fun, people don't realize that they're actually learning stuff. So I always try to make it somewhat entertaining. I from and I think this is just me. Maybe that's it. I just I'm me. I don't try. I don't worry about my brand. I don't worry about how I'm coming across. I'm just here to help you. And this is how I talk. So this is how I do it. And so over the years, I've uh I've had some really weird instances where uh, I used to do a show that was based on my faith called Feeding My Faith. Well, I played a clip for it. 
And all the atheists, this one, I should say, this one atheist came out and said, look, man, I want to hear about your invisible sky buddy. And it wasn't even me talking. It was just a clip for another show to which then all the atheists came out and said, no, Dave, you, you, you and your sky buddy are great. Don't listen to that guy. He does. So there's this whole weird, uh, argument between my listeners. that was kind of different. And I just try to every now and then, uh, I'd always worry about this because when I try, that's when it usually falls on my face. I will try to throw something specifically designed to make you laugh, whether it's, um, I remember I did a joke, uh, or a skit, I guess you could say on, uh, you know, how every, um, you know, there's a commercial for some sort of drug and there's always these side effects and people at the end, you know, call your doctor if this happens or this and that. And that, and so I went through all these ones, you know, having a podcast can lead to making you have other podcasts and call your doctor if your podcast lasts longer than four hours and all these other things that were just trying to be cute and funny. So I always do that just because I want my audience to kind of expect every now and then something to be just a little weird. Cause I think at times I'm just a little weird. So I guess that's my success. I just, I'm just me. And if you don't like me, I think I'm okay with that. And, and that's the other thing I think that, that helps after a while. You just have to realize that not everybody's going to like you. And if you don't like me, go listen to my buddy Ray or Daniel or whoever. So Dave, what do you think the next big thing in podcasting is? That is a great question. It's really hard to pick because as we record this now, there, you know, we've had Spotify come on. We had Google Podcast launch a, a new app, and Pon, uh, Pandora has just put their their toe in the water. And I'm not really expecting any of those to make a big deal uh, because the the in car dashboard that was supposed to be the big splash. Well, people don't buy new cars that often. And number two, uh, I had a Toyota Prius for a while. It didn't have the in dash thing, but it did have Bluetooth. And when I got in the car, once I paired my phone with my car, every time I got in, I just hit play. So I don't think having a play button on the dashboard is really going to make that much of a difference because people that need that are, oh, if I were to stereotype there, you know, maybe somewhat older and not that familiar with how to sync a phone to a car. And those people may not be listening to podcasts. I'm not sure. So I, I'm really not sure what we need is more listeners and I think I actually went to a picnic and uh, this is right after I got inducted into the Hall of Fame and my cousin was kind of poking fun at me. And she's like, oh, there's Mr. Hall of Fame. And I said, yeah, yeah, don't whatever. And she said, well, I'm going to ask because nobody else is going to ask. And I go, what? And she goes, what the heck? I like, how do I, what's a podcast? What, what, what's this whole thing you're in? And I said, do you have an iPhone? And she goes, yeah. And I said, okay, go find this purple app right here. And so then my other cousin was like, Hey, I'll wait, hold on. Let me get my phone. And so on the back porch, I taught five people how to consume podcasts and we need more of that. And I, I really think that's going to be the big thing. I was kind of excited. Uh, I just saw one of my first holiday commercials, you know, with the you know, um, sleigh bells ringing in the background of the whole nine yards. And I wish I could remember the name of the company, but they were saying how you can find gifts for so-and-so and get these for grandpa so he can listen to his podcast. And it was a oh, pair of head, Yeah. And it was a pair of headphones. And I was like, okay, they're saying podcast. Like everybody just knows what that is now. And because I'm old school in a way, I'm like, there's still some people going up. What do I need a, do I need a what to listen to that? So that I, I, I hear that more and more, you know, there's a, a show on TV right now called uh, God friended me. And the lead character is a podcaster who's doing, he's an atheist. His dad is a pastor. It's this whole weird thing. But the, again, they, he's constantly recording a podcast and I'm like, all right, this is kind of cool. That you're just kind of going mainstream. So I wish I had an answer that would say, it's smart speakers, you know, uh, the woman in the tube from uh, uh, Amazon and Siri and all these other things. Are, I, I think they're all going to bring about 3% more people, you know, and as things go up, uh, it'll do it. But I, I wish I had the – if I had the answer to, you know, what's going to give me 10,000 downloads, I'd, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> but I think it's going to be a combination of all of those. It was such a thrill to interview Dave. I encourage you all to seek out his podcast and to follow him across social media. There's a lot more to this interview, but like I stated earlier, I'm only sharing the answers to the questions from my thesis on this show. As with every interview, I try to leave with three key takeaways. The three that stood out to me from Dave are, number one, shut up and listen. Number two, 
guest on any show that will have you. Number three, make it fun and be yourself. What are your takeaways? What did Dave say that affected your business and content creation going forward? Share your thoughts on the Facebook thread for this episode. I would love to hear your insights. You can find Dave at davidjackson.org or schoolofpodcasting.com. Find his show on your favorite podcast app, be it iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, or Android. Be sure to subscribe and give him a great review. Believe it or not, those reviews even help a Hall of Famer like Dave Jackson. While you're at it, please subscribe to New Media Lab with Robert Southgate wherever you listen to podcasts. You can email the show at southgatesmallbusiness at gmail.com. New Media Lab is on Facebook. Simply search at New Media Lab. Our network's website is southgatemediagroup.com, where you can find this, as well as over 100 other podcasts, plus blogs, videos, information about our live events, and so much more. If you want to follow me personally, I'm on Twitter, at rsouthgate, or on Instagram, at robsouthgate. Support this show and get awesome extra content by becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com slash newmedialab and choose your tier. Please rate and review this show on whatever service you subscribe to podcasts on. It really helps others find the show and tells me if you like what I'm doing here. You can find New Media Lab on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, and hopefully anywhere else that distributes podcasts. If you can't find us, let me know and I'll rectify the situation. All this plus more links will be in the show notes and on our website. So don't worry if you didn't have a pen to write it all down. And thanks again to Dave Jackson for helping me with my thesis and for being such a fantastic guest. That's it for this week, everyone. The next episode will drop next Tuesday. Until then, get out there and create something.